it, everybody. And now it's time for the interview segment of today's show, talking about one of the most interesting topics that will affect all of us uh, in the physical world and in the metaverse, which is artificial intelligence. And uh, how will this affect the future of work? How will this affect the metaverse? Uh, and all of us trying to uh, create new business models and new types of work um, in these virtual worlds. Fortunately, we have a great guest with us today. Uh, we are going to be joined by Dr. Mark Nasilla, who is the Chief Data and Analytics Officer at First Rand Risk. He is also a Singularity U faculty member uh, for AR, uh, in, you know, and has delivered many different uh, programs for Singularity University over the last couple of years. He is also a steering committee member of the National Institute for Theoretical Physics and Computational Sciences. He holds a PhD in mathematical statistics uh, from the Nelson Mandela University. He was also named one of the Carinium Global Intelligence 2020 Global Top 100 Innovators in Data and Analytics. And we are very fortunate that he's joining us here today. Mark, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Mick. I'm excited to be here. Brilliant. So, I mean, there's so much going on in AR. You know, we're hearing about all these new types of artworks and creativity and this burst of creativity that people uh, using these new AR models and these new AR tools are creating, um, like Dale 2 and all of that. You know, what's exciting you in AR at the moment? So, Mick, every single organization today is trying to make sure it's not left behind in the AI opportunity. And what we're seeing in the market today is the ongoing democratization of AI, where organizations are making sure that AI is at the fingertips of everyone. So today there's various applications that are, are allowing everyone to execute functions without necessarily being experts. This include like, for example, being able to search um, information, display graphs, visualizations at a click of a mouse. Then you just mentioned creativity, and this is uh, basically being driven by generative AI. We all know uh, the AI language models, GPT-3 and uh, uh, DAL-E, which uh, focuses on creating images, both of which have been developed by OpenAI, are actually shifting focus to enabling creativity. And we're seeing this actually crop up in the space of image, and we've seen uh, the other day, um, uh, an AI-generated painting won a competition in, in Colorado, uh, as well as now the ability to uh, create music that we've not seen before. Listen, ethical and explainable AI is continuing to be a major topic. Scientists are working on being able to explain what AI is doing, but also to build trust in making sure people can trust uh, AI and other technologies. Uh, we're seeing models of working change where uh, AI is driving augmented working, allowing technology to perform repetitive hard tasks and allowing people to uh, focus on cre uh, creativity. Some of these creative solutions that are being created from the open AR algorithms that they've released now, you know, you're seeing, uh, you know, people that aren't artists create some unique, unique artworks with the help of AR. You know, well, how does this going to affect the actual creator uh, of today? You know, will the creator of today be, still be the creator of tomorrow? Or are we going to see a whole bunch of new people coming in? What are your predictions there? So, Mick, for a long time, uh, people thought the role of AI is to just drive efficiency and automation. But these advances in creativity mean that, one, we're going to have what we call augmented creativity where AI and these technologies are basically executing creativity that already exists, uh, combining creativity. Uh, an example was, will, was in the artwork where uh, AI is capable of taking ideas or creations of different artists and, and putting it together, combining them to get a superior uh, uh, output that actually would be much more fulfilling. For traditional artists, it will be much more now focusing on creating new ideas that AI doesn't know, uh, understanding humanity and society, and coming up with ideas that would help um, solve for gaps that we don't see in the current uh, products, but also uh, meet the need for uh, 
a lot of customers who need for a lot of customers that we didn't see before. So I think ultimately what you're saying is that it's actually going to uh, help the current artists be better at what they do, and they're going to have to, and it's going to get let them explore new uh, sort of unknown areas of art. And people that aren't really into art, it will give them a bit of a step up and enable them to, uh, you know, become possibly a creator where before they wouldn't even have tried uh, without these tools. Exactly, including them spending time with society to understand what is it that triggers different types of populations, uh, understand what aspects of art or even music should be customized while leveraging these technologies. But also, we know very well limitations of what artists could do, uh, even if they had these creative ideas. So today, technology can help them augment and reproduce uh, that creativity within given parameters uh, driven by these technologies. Awesome, awesome. And let's hear your last point you were going to make uh, about some of the, the exciting stuff you're seeing in AI before we move on. Uh, so just three areas. One, um, augmenting AI with traditional way of working. So it, we're talking about a future made up of human machine partnerships where humans focus on what they're good at and allowing machines to perform repetitive tasks that drives productivity. Sustainable AI, today climate risk is a big, big topic and AI will play a major role in reducing the, carb uh, the carbon footprint uh, as well as driving other um, uh, strategies that uh, minimize risks from climate change. And last but not least, a topic that you like so much AI is bringing the metaverse to life. Love it, love it. And, th and that's a great segue into this next piece is, you know, wh wh what are the benefits of AI in the metaverse? Why bring AI into the metaverse? And how you say it's bringing it to life? Uh, wh what are some of these things? So th there's a few capabilities that AI is informing or even spearheading. And this range from, for example, we know very well avatars are exciting and gamify the experience within the metaverse or this virtual environment. And um, in, in designing and personalizing and, and, and driving creativity around them, AI is playing a major role around it. Then we also know there's a behavioral experience in this virtual environment. And this behavioral experience is driven by data. And AI is playing a major role in making sure that there's learning around behavior informing what people like within the, this environment, as well as uh, what they would prefer from a needs perspective. Then let's talk about digital humans. And some of them um, range from human-like conversations, chatbots, if you may think about it, as, as well as the ability to automate utility functions. If you think about the banking space, the ability to have a personalized response so that um, uh, you can humanify the process and make it real. And AI is at the center of, 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 of this process. Language processing, including translating language. Uh, so today, um, AI can generate language, can understand language. And within the metaverse, AI will be able to uh, execute interactions, provide responses, translate language, as, as well as um, uh, generate insights. So, you know, the ability that the AR can actually um, translate for you in real time, I think that's going to be such a great way for, for human beings to communicate from different cultures and different backgrounds. As an example, just that if, you know, if you speak Chinese and I speak English, and if we can be in the same environment in, in the metaverse together, and I'm speaking to you in English and you speaking to me in Chinese, that we can have this flowing conversation that is translated in real time, sharing different cultures and ideas. That is revolutionary and that is unbelievable. And that will happen in the physical world as well as the metaverse. But I think, you know, it's going to create so many more connections. Because if you think about that now on the internet, you don't really spend that much time talking to somebody uh, from another language. But if you were being translated in real time, even in text, you would, it would create much more... Um, communication between other cultures. So I think that's a great, great point. 
Um, some of the other things you spoke about are avatars. Let's dive deep into avatars and how either as a chatbot, uh, you know, or as an avatar that's actually your personal avatar, your personal assistant could be an AI that's helping you uh, navigate your day in the metaverse and optimizing uh, where you're going, how many appointments, how many sales you're doing, a variety of different uh, tasks and uh and operations that can be helped with AI. Do you want to just unpack a bit more on avatars for us? Yes. So um, we know very well AI can um, uh, create experiences, personalized experiences. In fact, these avatars can be informed by AI systems that consume personalized data that can speak in a specific way, a specific use jargon from a specific industry, for example. Think about the banking uh, sector. Uh, this terminology that is used to, a, to 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 express the business of banking. Um, think about the health sector, uh, Mick, um, where patients interact with doctors. And you won't believe it today. Only seven percent of patients in Africa are understood by their doctors. So, technology will build on these capabilities so that in a virtual environment this end-to-end uh, seamless communication. I mean, it's really exciting. It's just, it's just uh, incredible to think about how we're going to be helped in the metaverse because of AR, uh, either through these avatars or these bots or these different predictive systems that can help our, uh, you know, just us getting by in the day. Uh, what are your ideas on how AR can really help us in terms of the future of work uh, you know, you know, how is it going to uh, make our day better uh, in the metaverse? And, you know, could the AR even, you know, almost digital twin ourselves and have an AR running some of our personal tasks for us uh, in the metaverse? Or, you know, some of our chores, some of our work uh, chores could be run by an AR digital twin of ourselves in the metaverse as an avatar, something like that. So... We have what are called digital humans in the metaverse. And they will be able to view, review, listen to users, interact even with people in meetings, and provide feedback uh, using like natural it. language and speech. And they will be able to represent us in meetings. They will be able to even uh, record meetings and ask for action items, if you think about it. And therefore, they will almost liberate us to focus on things that require us to apply our mind. If to, they will liberate us to allow us to spend time with our loved ones or even carry out tasks that require us to discover the future. So um, this is, is, a, is a big revolution, Mick, and uh, basically will allow us to create an economy of creativity because we're spending a lot of time today uh, uh, in things that uh, technologies such as the metaverse should be taking over from us. I love it. Yeah, I mean, just to think about that whole idea of like the AR can create, can actually help us build the metaverse. So if you teach an AR how to build an environment based on your likes and your needs, you know, you might be creating new worlds uh, from the AR system that knows how to, uh, you know, touch your button, so to speak. So that you'll feel happy and you'll feel comfortable and you feel at ease in your AR generated uh, venue or world uh, or environment or as an avatar uh, generated by your AR. Uh, maybe just leave us with some closing thoughts on, you know, how far do you see this going? How far away are we from AR coming into the metaverse and helping us in, in these ways? And, um, you know, what are some of the things you're excited about uh, that's coming within the next, say, six months, and then the next, you know, two to three years with AI? So, uh, Mick, AI is here. And when we talk about the AI opportunity, one is transforming business models so that uh, the working environment and organizations can allow their workforce to spend time on things that require their workforce to apply their mind. The second thing is, um, I'm excited about the advancements in, in ethical and transparency in AI. And this, basically, we're seeing it build trust, build um, 
faith in AI, making sure that uh, those who are developing these technologies are doing it for the right reasons and they're benefiting society. Uh, today's challenges cannot just be solved the old ways. They do require us to leverage AI as well as other technologies. Um, experience has been a big one and especially uh, normal uh, interaction experience. Uh, and through the metaverse, as well as um, other virtual experiences enabled by AI, big data, virtual reality, uh, we're going to improve on experience and customer experience, your humane experience, as well as allow us to be more human than ever. And I think if any organization is not doing enough to invest in AI, they should realize that this, they should start that straight away because they will miss out on this AI opportunity. Thanks so much, Mark. Totally agree with you. Uh, you know, AI is enabling us. What's so great is that the conversation has shifted over the last couple of years from this fear of AI to really embracing AI and, and, and letting it enable all of these amazing, amazing uh, opportunities that that uh, you know lie ahead for us as you know in the workforce, in our personal capacity, in our own creative endeavors. Uh, AI is really helping us. So really, thank you for your time and and uh, all that you do in AI. And uh, if anyone wants just some closing words, if anyone wants to follow you, where's the best place to reach you? How can someone get hold of you? Thank you, Mick. Um, if anyone wants to uh, uh, continue the conversation, they can get hold of me um, on LinkedIn, Dr. Mark Nasila. Uh, they can also, I'm also on Twitter as M uh, Nasila. So please reach out. Let's continue the co conversation. We need to continue building on the narrative so that we can democratize these technologies. Thank you.